starting a vlogging project that I shot an intro for and apparently deleted. So today we're, <laughs> I'm at the end of the project, but you're seeing this at the beginning. And that is I am continuing on from my 2023 project of unwrapping a bunch of books that I wrapped up at the end of 2022. There were 30 of them. And at the end of 2023, I still had a bunch left. So I decided to embark on a pretty ruthless read it or unhaul it project wherein I would allow myself to read basically until I was not interested. So I was not going to to do one of those situations where it's like, oh, maybe it's going to get better. Maybe it's going to get better. I've had them on my TBR long enough. If I'm not, if I haven't read them and I, I just, I have to just do it. I have to either read them or get rid of them. No more messing around. So without further ado, let's see how I did with the, oh gosh, definitely, I think like 15-ish books in this. I don't know. I forget how many. It's been a while. Enjoy. separated them into, no, I don't need any more. Maybe I need more. And yes, I need more. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that this time around, I feel like I was more successful. My hit rate of things that I either maybe or do want more of. Okay, so let's start with the maybes. Why not? <sighs> Natalie Tan's Book of Luck and Fortune by Roselle Lim. This is a maybe verging on a no. I do want a little bit more. I'm getting the sense that this might be a little bit more on the women's fictiony side and less on the um, romance end of things. And really what I was hoping for was romance. Starts off with a lot about grief, but I don't know, the writing is nice. So maybe we're gonna, we're gonna see how much longer I can go on that one. Okay, this is a controversial one. I know many of you will be like, how dare this not be an automatic yes? I know, I know. Okay, Queen Move by Kennedy Ryan. Two things that have me a little hesitant. One is the use of italics. I just don't, the way it's being used, I don't enjoy it. And the second thing is we start in the present and then we go immediately to the past and I don't know about that. So I may just skip the things that are in the past. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to keep going. I, I am going to keep going. Don't judge me. Okay. Car Carter and Lovecraft by Jonathan L. Howard. I'm honestly keeping going because I'm disappointed that I didn't love this and I just want to keep reading to make sure because this is like, what is, okay. Daniel Carter used to be a homicide detective, but his last case went wrong in strange ways, strange ways and soured him, soured the job for him. It was a hunt for a serial killer. Now he's a private investigator trying to live a quiet life. Strangeness, however, has not finished with him. First, he inherits a bookstore in Providence from someone he's never heard of, along with an indignant bookseller who doesn't want a new boss. She's Emily Lovecraft, the last known de descendant of H.P. Lovecraft. So like that setup is so fun. And I've loved other Jonathan L. Howard books, particularly um, Joh Johannes Cabal, the detective. So I want to love this, but the writing was really throwing me. I don't know. This is a maybe because I, I need to see if maybe we can get through the first few chapters. Okay. And the last was A Solitude of Wolverines. This has a lot of action in the first chapter, but I'm wondering if it's because then it's gonna like be a little bit more of a slow burn. It's in the wilderness. The dude who was shooting up this event, I think one of them got away. So maybe he's gonna be the bad guy. I don't know. Maybe. I'm willing to give it another 40 to 60 pages to see if I can vibe with it. So those are the maybes. Yeses, Cold Magic by Kate Elliott. Obsessed with the world, obsessed with the writing. It kind of feels like Victorian fantasy-ish. 
I don't know what's going on, but I love the writing, so we're gonna keep going. And then Ken Liu's The Grace of Kings. The writing is fine, but it just seems like some good solid ye fantasy land setup. And there's like an attempt, assassination attempt on an emperor in the first chapter. So like, yeah, this seems like something I should keep going in. I'm into it. Then three romances, all of which I could use as some palette cleansing through the rest of the year, written in the stars by Alexandria Belfleur, uh, which is a sapphic contemporary Darcy Elizabeth retelling. We've got A Prince on Paper by Alyssa Cole, which is in her Reluctant Royal series. Alyssa Cole does very little wrong in my opinion. So of course I enjoyed this first chapter. Uh, and then The Vir Virgin and the Rogue by Sophie Jordan. A little bit on the bubble for me because it starts with like this girl in the Regency, I'm assuming, complaining that she has like period cramps. So her sister gives her this tonic but it's actually a love potion. And I don't know, she has like this sort of drippy, boring fiance. I don't know, this didn't totally sell me on it, but I definitely need to read more because I feel like I, I need to, I need more information. We Others by Stephen Milhauser. This is a magical realism literary short story collection. The first story is fine, but I definitely want to read more because uh, I have very much enjoyed some of his short stories in the past. So we'll, we'll definitely keep going there. And then last we have Death and the Maiden by Ariana Franklin and Samantha Norman. This is a medieval whodunit. And the first chapter had this sort of like flustered friar guy. So I don't know, I was intrigued. I definitely want to read more. So those are the yeses and the maybes. The noes, well, these are also controversial and surprising to me, frankly. I Some of these that I said yes to or maybe to, I thought were much more likely to be noes than some of the things in the no, in, in the no pile. No, Old Man's War by John Scalzi. Shocked. The reason I'm saying no and that this is getting DNF'd and unhauled is that I did not like the writing at all. Like at all at all. So that's a hard stop. It's just kind of more f c attempting to be comedic than I was expecting and the humor was not working for me. Similarly, another Darcy Lizzie retelling, but this time it's YA in a debate team, is debating Darcy. Humor in this did not work for me. Maybe if you're an actual teen, it would work better, but not for me. The Summer Deal by Jill Chavez. I have liked Jill Chavez books in the past, but it just felt like very bland. This girl's coming home because some guy dumped her. I just couldn't care. It, it's perfectly competently written, but just, I realized I had zero investment. Actually, I just realized a lot of YA in this pile. What We Buried, this is an old arc that Bethany gave me, and it's like a mystery thriller YA pick. First chapter is a courtroom scene. I wasn't vibing with the voice very much and wasn't very intrigued to keep going. And then last, this is a very, this was good. Uh, I just, in terms of, do I wanna keep going right now? The answer is no. And that is Dry by Neil and Jared Schusterman. And that's because this is dystopian. It's very effectively dystopian, but it was making me anxious. I just can't compute with this in my fictional time. So yeah, that is where we stand for this round. So I have, I think 11 books I need to get through. Uh, and spoilers, one of the books I said yes, I wanted to keep going with, I actually finished in one sitting because I could not put it down. I got a 4.5 star. I invite you to guess what, which one that was in the comments below. I will see you guys. I'll, I'll leave that one for last. You'll get the update on that one at the very end. I'll leave this here. I'll see you when I either DNF or finish another book. Well, hello. Since last we talked, I did go ahead and DNF Natalie Tan's book of luck and good fortune by Roselle Lim. This is not bad. It's actually quite well written, but I, it is just going to be a lot about this woman processing the death of her mother and like maybe trying to reintegrate into the community that she left behind. While I think that's nice, that's not really what I was wanting from the book. Also, Marple has the zoomies. And yeah, I think since I bought this, I have learned to to not to not buy books like this. It's not that they're bad, they're just not, it's not really a subgenre of general, like the kind of liminal space between general fiction and romance that I personally enjoy. Like it's not usually really my thing. So I just don't buy these anymore. But I didn't know about that about myself when I bought this. So, or I knew I knew it, but I don't think I, I knew how to spot them as well. <laughs> so um, anyway, not a bad book. I wouldn't just recommend it to you, but just, I just don't want to keep going. So we're going to DNF this one.
I come to you with another DNF. So, The Virgin and the Rogue. I was trying to go along with it. I was a little thrown off when our hero straight out the gate talks about how his dad and stepmom invite him to orgies. I kept, I, I tried to keep it punching. But problem is our heroine has an aphrodisiac. She's like not sure what's happening to her body. She stumbles out into the hallway. Dude thinks she's just like, horny as hell and finger blasts her in the hallway. And he is not impacted by this aphrodisiac, she is. I have heard that this is addressed, but like, I, I, it's just not for me, okay? Like, it's a little too dubcon. I think I'm just out. So it does feel sort of like the banana pants, over the top 80s bodice ripper a little bit. So if you are looking for a more modern version of those kinds of very over the top tropes, this might be one for you. But for me, the orgy was, I, I just, okay, I'm sorry. Like you imagine going to an orgy with your father and your stepmother? Like what? Okay, that was a lot, <laughs> but the dubcon was a bridge too far. And for that reason, I'm out. Aw, guys, this is so cute. Um, yeah, this was a delight. A Prince on Paper is just Alyssa Cole being Alyssa Cole, which is great and thoughtful and sexy and funny and sweet. I just love the way she does contemporaries. This is another, like, as the, the series title suggests, also. There's a Marple and there's a Hastings. Um, but as the series title suggests, uh, reluctant royals. These are all stories of, you know, modern royalty, royalty, modern fake royalty. And this one has fake dating, Naya and Johan, who we've seen previously in the series. And they're both just like such sweet little, like, vulnerable muffins. I don't know. They were just really cute and they had baggage, but they worked on it together. Just all in all, it was adorable. So big thumbs up from me on this one. I'd give it four stars. Not like an all-time favorite, but definitely one of the better contemporaries I've read this year. So very glad I held on to this one. I knew I was going to love it, but yeah. Anyway, onwards and upwards. Okay. DNF to Carter and Lovecraft. This is a real bummer because I have loved books from Jonathan L. Howard in the past, but the writing in this one I just could not get into. Yeah, maybe I just like Johannes Cabal and I'm not into this version of what he does, but I got to page 50 and I just, I don't want to get to page 51. So too bad. I'm, I'm bummed about this one, but if I'm being honest, I don't want to keep going, so. DNF. Another DNF, I'm calling it on A Solitude of Wolverines. My problem with this is that I keep waiting for it to feel like it has any kind of gravitas to it, and it just doesn't. The writing feels very cheesy, but the book is not really pitched as sort of like a cozy or a cheesy book. And I did look, I think that the author is a, is a wildlife sanctuary monitor, geographic information system specialist, and bioacoustician. Sure. Um, so I'm guessing that this author is primarily a scientist versus a writer, and I just am kind of feeling it. So yeah, I don't know. There's the dialogue I just keep cringing at. It's just, it, it goes on to, like, look how long this little dialogue scene is on this page, and it's doing nothing. It's literally just like joking around with her dad cheesily. I don't know. I guess it's supposed to build character, but I, what, what is being built of the character I don't care about. So, you know, I'm going to leave it off here. She's being hounded by reporters to talk about this gunman situation. And she got a gig in Montana to go study Wolverines, but I guess I will not be along for the ride to find out what that's like. So this might be, if you're like really into the outdoors bit, maybe you would like this better, but it's not for me, I don't think. So DNF time. Hey there, checking in because I have made the executive decision to actually move both of these to a different video because they fit very nicely. And this video, I feel like has a lot of books in it. So that will give me uh, an opportunity to read these and give them the due consideration they deserve because they're both very big books and I think I'll have a lot to say about them. So these are not getting unhauled, but these are getting un TBR'd for this video. They're going to a different video. Alrighty, we finished two more. Uh, well, 
finished is not exactly accurate. I finished one and DNF the other. The one I DNF'd was Death and the Maiden by Ariana Franklin and Samantha Norman. This I somewhat feel is a reflection of the fact that this is the last in the series. Because I wonder if I had already known these characters, if I would be less annoyed by them. <laughs> But the problem is the character I like is Adelia and she's the mom and her daughter Allie seems like a petulant weirdo. Like I just don't, her vibes are rancid and it says that we're gonna be following her. Let's see here. Uh, Allie, do Allie is a skilled healer, but the young woman is nearly 20 and her father, the Bishop of St. Albans and her patron, the formidable Queen Eleanor of Aquitaine would like her to find a husband. When a friend in Cambridgeshire falls ill, Allie is said to eat, Allie is said to Ely, where her path will cross with Lord Peverell, a young aristocrat who would be a much more suitable match. Um, anyway, so it sounds like we're following Allie based on that description and I'm 40-ish pages in. We haven't, she's not been sent yet, but she is insufferable. So do I want her to follow her solving crimes? No. Do I think the writing otherwise is pretty good? Yeah, and I like the setting. So this is actually making me think I might go back and try the beginning of this series, but getting her as my protagonist, not gonna work for me. So that is why we're DNFing this. And then I finally finished We Others by Stephen Milhauser. I was devastated to realize this wasn't in my collection spreadsheet, so I don't get to mark it as a book off of my TBR and that in fact my TBR has been off. It's so satisfying. That's like half the joy of finishing a book to me is getting to go in the spreadsheet and be like, it's like when you check something off a list, like if you have a list of to do and you check something off and sometimes you go and write the thing that you had to do that you already did but didn't put on the list in order just to check it off. It's that kind of feeling. Anyway, this was good. Uh, I already know I really like Stephen Milhauser. He does magical realism short works. What is it? The Prestige is based on one of his short stories. So that that's kind of the tone of a lot of them. There's some that were new and some that were collected from other collections. So I'd actually read several of the stories in here already. And it was fun to revisit some of those like um, Flying Carpets in particular is one that I really like somewhere in here. Um, but yeah, so of the ones that I had already read. I'd say there was maybe like a third of these, like a third of this book I had read previously. The new short stories, well, I will say in general, I think he is more successful the shorter his stories are. I don't tend to love novella length stories. Those are usually the least successful ones to me, including the title story, We Others. That was like 50 plus pages. So I don't know. I think that when he, I think some of his, you know, which one was it? The Invasion from Outer Space. That was four pages, five pages, and I thought that was one of the best stories in the collection. Like, I think he, d for m my money, he is most successful when he's kind of like keeping it tight, but his writing is beautiful, so even when they're a little long, I still enjoy them. I bookmarked this page, I think, because I had a paragraph I thought was, well, a good representation of his writing. Yes, okay. So here's just a sample of what his writing is like in case you've never read from him before. In the morning, we woke to a world covered in yellow dust. It lay on the tops of our fences, on the crossbars of telephone poles, black tra tire tracks showed in the yellow streets, birds shaking their wings flung up sprays of yellow powder. Again, the sweet stroopers came, the hoses splashed in driveways and lawns, making a yellow mist and revealing the black and green underneath. Within an hour, the driveways and lawns resembled yellow fields. Lines of yellow ran along cables and telephone wires. So it's not flowery, but I think it's well observed. I think, you know, it's, it's, does a, it's evocative. I feel like it communicates what he's trying to get across and his word choices effective in both describing the scene, but also setting a mood, which I, is something that I enjoy. So anyway, I really like his writing. Some of these were better than others, but you know, I think this was successful. So overall I would give this probably four stars, like a soft four between three and a half and four. That is one thing that's difficult about short story collections is that inevitably you have ones you love. It's very rare that there's like no, no fat or like no weak ones. Some of the best collections that I've read in recent years were Aiedi by Roxane Gay and Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. In both of those, there were few, if any, stories that I felt like were lesser, but I think that that's very 
unusual. Like it's, to me, I expect there to be a couple of duds or just stories that I don't click with in any given short story collection. So I finished that. So I only have one book left. It's over there. We're getting close to wrapping this party up. So I'll catch her for the last book. Come to you tonight as a woman officially calling defeat. And I am so bummed. I really wanted to like this. I really like Kennedy Ryan as a person from the internet. <laughs> And I, I like the idea of this, but it just, it just, I kept going past when I said I was going to, because I've been wanting to stop for quite a while, <laughs> but I got to page like almost a hundred. And I think that the momentum of this one just got ruined for me because it's the first chunk of it's in flashback. And then there's like dude breaking up with another woman. He's supposed to be the hero. I just don't think this one was for me. I'm gonna keep trying. I am determined to find a Kennedy Ryan book that I'm gonna like, but I think she's just, she's an angsty goddess. And I am a anxious Annie who, who needs angst only in very specific ways. So I'm very tragically DNFing this. I don't wanna talk about it anymore because I feel like failure. Um, I'll check back in, I'm tired. I'm about to go to bed. Check back in with you guys once I have looked at my stats of how all of this ended up. And hello, back to the beginning of the vlog. Uh, the book that I could not put down was written in the stars. Is it the best contemporary romance I've ever read? No, but it just made me, it gave me the escapism I wanted. It made me giggle and kick my feet in the way that I love in a romance. And I just love the banter and the chemistry of these two characters. Granted, she's riding the rails of all the goodwill that I have towards Darcy and Lizzie, but you know, good on ya. I love this. Four and a half stars. I didn't even just try a chapter. I finished the whole damn thing in one go. So there we go. Okay, so now you've seen how I did. What have I taken away from this? Well, I mean, some of these books were very worthwhile. I had a four and a half star in this bunch. Uh, it made my best of the year list for romance last year. Like there was a big, big hit in this. So I don't think that Unhauling Blindly would have been the right choice for this cohort of books because of the ones I did finish, my average was 3.75. So a lot of four stars, I said a four and a half. Um, so there you go. Of the ones I finished, it was, it was Gucci. But of the 30 I wrapped up, I only finished six of them, which means I DNF 70%. Uh, three, three of them I've not finished yet. So the two I think I'm going to finish, I'm planning to finish, are the Ken Leo one and the Kate Elliott one. I think I'm going to enjoy those, but they're moving to a different vlogging project. And then the other one is the autobiography of Malcolm X, which I've just realized that I need to mood read nonfiction. I can't kind of do that in physical form on demand. So when I get to those, I think I'm going to finish all of them. So let's assume that that would get us to, oh gosh, math. Uh, I think by the end of this, of the 30 books I wrapped up, of them I will have actually read and the rest I will have DNF'd. So I will only have read nine of them and DNF 21. What have I learned as a result of that? Well, I think getting to, like, since I started doing this, I've been much better about trying chapters, like trying to find a sample, because often the reason I DNF has to do with writing. So I'm getting better about seeing if the writing works for me before I buy a book especially a physical book, because it just feels like more of a commitment to have it physically lying around. Uh, so that's been a big lesson for me and something I've implemented. And yeah, I think a lot of what I've learned is that I kind of just got to get into the book. It's hard sometimes to know if I'm going to like a book. I have to just kind of get in there, especially for these ones that are older and I haven't selected as recently. Um, I think I just need to, to get to them quicker is my takeaway. So you will be seeing that throughout this year. I have a lot of projects, a lot of vlogging efforts that are designed to help me go ahead and get to a lot of things that have been on my TBR for a long time, because I think there is a higher chance that they may not be for me. And I'd rather just go ahead and find that out as opposed to just letting them linger and linger and linger. So um, I had some great hits, I had some misses, and all around I had fun. Jolly japes, hijinks abound, good times. So with that being said, definitely let me know uh, what you thought about any of the books that I DNF'd, uh, any of the books I read. Let me know your thoughts in general about how you manage older books on your TBR and how you get through them. And yeah, I think that'll do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined.
I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!